Welcome to the Stalwart Vanguard Experience! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first episode of the Stalwart Vanguard Experience. Today, uh, I just figured I'd start an episode sharing some of the notes I've been taking. Um, I started writing things down recently. I realized if I put this somewhere where it's easy to access, like open with a pen already on it, I can actually start writing notes down that come into my mind. I always have these like random thoughts. Look, here's the first one. Let's just set Let's. I'll just. All right, here it is. He wakes up in a small room, realizing he was having a nightmare. He remembers the backpack and sleeping, the sleeping roll from the dream, which reminds him about climbing or his camping trip with grandpa. Okay, I think I remember this. So, uh, the backpack and sleeping bag from the dream, which reminds him of a camping trip with his grandpa. Um, it, this was actually a video game idea I had. Uh, there was this video game called Sandbox, or it's a, yeah, the Sandbox Maker. So at the time I was looking at like cryptocurrencies and stuff and the metaverse, and I was thinking of ideas of how I could get into the metaverse. Like, uh, cause it, I, when I see the metaverse in my mind, I imagine a ready player one experience. And uh, Sandbox, it looked like the Minecraft version of how that could exist. So um, it's still in alpha, it looks like. I was working on a game. I was building it. I don't know if there's NDAs or anything like that. I haven't published anything, but I was just using what assets it already had and just trying to like make a narrative or fit like that story into what I was doing. I'm pulling it up in the background. We'll be able to see it here in a second. But yeah, uh, I remember having the dream and I, this is like one of the first things I wrote down is I, I had the notebook next to the bed and I was in here thinking about or uh, sleeping and then I woke up thinking about the, the dream I had and it was like, I think in the middle of the night I had to use the bathroom or something maybe. But I remember this dream specifically and uh, yeah, it had a camping trip in it. I don't know. Or it was a nightmare. It was a dream. But it was a nightmare. He wakes up in a small room, realizing he was having a nightmare. It's kind of like the Legend of Zelda. I'm like trying to remember when when I try to remember things like like dreams or something like that, or like if I try to like use my imagination to try to like think about something. I feel like the more I force it, the more I try harder to to do that, the more difficult it becomes. It's like if you imagine you're in a pool and there's like a, a beach ball and you're trying to get to the beach ball real fast, um, the more you rush your full body uh, profile towards the beach ball, the more you're going to create a wave that pushes the ball away. So you almost got to sneak up on things that you're trying to go after or or elude. Like take a step back, like rope a dope, and then jump in. Anyways, so that was that. Um, I don't know if this is even going to load. It's stuck on 12. We can continue while it appears to be loading in the background. So this feels like an ad, though. It just feels like a very tasteless ad. Um, let me get rid of this. Sure, at some point I could show you all that, but um, it wasn't loading. So we'll go on to the next page here. I dreamed of having my own family that I have the freedom to see whenever I want. I want my job to be a successful live streamer to, yeah, I want my job to be as a successful live streamer that shares the games I enjoy. This is what I was writing down. I don't know what the date is. I don't, I don't have dates, but this has pretty much been the theme. Like I needed to write it down, I guess, to see it. It's like the idea behind your reticular activating system is like, we all have this inner system in our mind that we can prime and uh you can actually uh set yourself up to be ready to receive specific types of information so by writing this down and affirming this is what i want to do i want to live stream i want to share video games and i want that to be my career like if i can see someone else doing something in my mind i can do that 
and like I go about it maybe not the same way or maybe I'm I'm unorthodox and hard headed in that way, but uh, I honestly have always believed. I remember having dreams or I would have nightmares as a kid. Like I remember in nightmares, understanding that if uh whatever I'm I'm up against can do something, I can also do that. So I guess. If, if like enough iterations of that like i was able to just like psychologically match the energy of the boogeyman whenever i would be in a dream or something and that's not to say i wouldn't have nightmares or be afraid i would like i was a kid i was terrified all the time of these nightmares and stuff but uh like i guess that gave me like the the fortitude or the the mental like attitude that i i could have that would uh allow something like this to stick in my mind at least so yeah, I mean, it, it kind of intuitively makes sense to me, like, just understanding from the dream world, like in, in the nightmares growing up, like what fucked me up the worst was Freddy Krueger. I've, I've probably mentioned this before in my previous episodes, but uh, I'm likely just going to repeat a lot of the same things you hear in all my streams and just be like a little bit more sus like, uh, not succinct, but I'm, I want to elaborate, especially if y'all have questions, but, um, that's what this is about. The podcast is going to, I guess, on days whenever I don't have a guest or something, um, I'll just expand a little bit on at previous episodes or just any of the content I've done on my Elude Stalwart Plays series of the Stalwart Vanguard, um, you know, umbrella. Think of uh, the Stalwart Vanguard as like the umbrella corporation and there's all these other companies below that, like Elude Stalwart's like one but I honestly, like there's, there's others, like you can, I think you can create others like you as part of the stalwart Vanguard, listening to this podcast, like I give you total freedom to add stalwart to your name. I, I hope to have an, ar uh, an army of stalwart Vanguard DNs, like a stalwart Vanguardian army, like, uh, almost like, you know, other communities. Anyways, I had a goal to align my mind, body, and soul to live an enriched and meaningful life. So that's easy to say, mind, body, and soul, enrich, meaningful life. But I think you have to figure out what the definition of all those loaded words are. And I think that's like a whole episode or podcast in itself. But uh, the idea for me, mind is like your uh, unconscious behavior. Like the more unconscious behavior uh, you have, programmed like the more your mind's kind of set in its ways or it's like anything that you do repetitively you condition your mind to or your body even your subconscious to to just have that on autopilot your body specifically is like ath athletics physical fitness and nutrition and uh i think that that's like a whole lifestyle in itself so like Someone can have an entire life revolving around just like developing the mind. I think another person could have an entire life just around developing like the, the capabilities of the body. And then like an entirely different person can have their entire life devoted to just like enriching their soul or expanding the awareness they have of their soul or awareness of their awareness and all this. But uh, yeah, each of those like easier said than done. And like, I think they they should be fundamental like as as walking to a person like having an understanding or a grasp of what these three aspects are for you and maybe there's other ways you can quantify like mind is a uh, you know un unconscious behaviors body is physical um conditioning and then soul is like metaphysical conditioning i guess you could say like maybe there's other aspects or dimensions like we don't even take into account but yeah, um, as far as like souls concerned, um, religions, I think are good. Like, I, I feel like um, I, I don't want to even really speak on other religious ideologies or beliefs than my own, because I, I feel like so much of that is personal to each person. And uh, you can be a part of a larger group or a community. And I, I would hope that community is just about educating each other to enrich their understanding further. But um, as far as soul's concerned, I think that um, your spirit and your sense of self is uh, something that you you 
can never fully understand and that you should always be seeking to discover or uncover or learn more of. And, and that's what I do. It's like, uh, there's a non-physical aspect to existence and, uh, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Like I'm, I'm pretty familiar with that. I feel like, uh, playing video games and stuff my whole life as a gamer, like as a kid, like maybe even just like stimming through video games or whatever. Um, I'm very accustomed to, I, I guess you could say, uh, it's like surrendering my consciousness over to like what I'm experiencing growing up, uh, in, in like the eighties and nineties, uh, I, I was actually, uh, I had a lot of TV access, but I wasn't like addicted to TV, like parents, like that said, if you watch TV, you would rot your brain. Like I wasn't a rot your brain out kid, but we did watch a lot of TV. Um, but we played outside, like, I, my mom and dad we made sure we had a balance. So, um, my dad would always push us to go outside and my mom, she, she would as well. Like we were very active outside, but yeah, uh, whenever I got a hold of video game consoles though, shh, like the, the idea that you can just try and fail and try and fail. And, and it's like, you level up in my opinion, like your experiences is your spiritual pressure or your your energy or your chi because like in in a way like the more experience you have like it, it brings me to uh the dragon ball super series when goku starts to become a uh, super saiyan blue wiz in order for him to even achieve that to begin with uh wiz has the wiz the angelic being that's tasked for training him or helping him train uh is helping him to understand how to unlock, I, I guess, Ultra Instinct. I, I think it was an accident that he even unlocked it. But uh, whenever I remember the conversation being around him controlling his energy, and like they showed him like the energy was leaking out, he wasn't controlling his energy very well. And I think your soul or your spirit is that it's like how well you're controlling the energy of your being. And uh, like you manage that by your food intake, your lifestyle, like what you focus your awareness on day to day. I think we surrender ourselves a lot to uh, uh, our awareness or the consciousness that, that we have that's precious, by the way, that should be protected. Um, we, we uh, Growing up, we would listen to music and radio and TVs and watch like, you know, all that stuff and movies and video games and all this. And in a way you're like surrendering your conscious experience to the main character avatar on the screen. And that's where I guess I, I started with, uh, w whenever I was talking about soul, it's like, we log in and out of this, uh, conscious, uh, 3d realm. Like the more, uh, we're able to like control that. I think the more spiritual reserves we we are able to have for ourselves. So not so freely surrendering that to like, to the things. And like, uh, I remember Alice in Wonderland, the red queen's army was, you had to run as fast as you can just to stay in place in the red queen's army. And the red queen is like the red queen of hearts of, of love of likes. And like, I just never, I, I was never interested in, in being judged by people, I guess. And as far as like likes and comments and all this stuff is concerned, like maybe it's judgment, but maybe it's like unfiltered thoughts and feedback from people. I always think like when you're sitting in the comment section of someone's videos, or even like if you're scrolling somewhere and you see like the chat going off, these are just all the thoughts people have in their head that they don't check. And these thoughts are so strong that they take the time and effort to type them out. So like, so much of our thought patterns and behaviors are just like repeated from yesterday. They say like 80%, I think it was Dr. Joe Dispenza said 80% of the thoughts a person thinks will be those same thoughts that they had yesterday. And it's like that 20% becomes more precious because now this is the, this is the bandwidth we have remaining to make a move forward towards a mind, body, soul, meaningful life enriched version of this reality so i guess that's what i mean to live in an enriched and meaningful life in in this reality but um yeah that's that was two lines like i had a goal to align my mind body and soul and uh 
yeah, we can go, guys. I, we can go back to these. And then we could just ramble and trigger people. And, and that's not ever my... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's like hostility sometimes and I I have no intention of pissing people off. I am not an internet troll. I don't feel like I'm an internet troll. I play I play with that that the, that people think that I'm that and sometimes maybe I am a troll because I do that, but I don't I don't do that a lot. I'm like most of the time what I'm typing is genuine. And I I was talking to my wife about this. Um maybe this is something from the south. I don't know. Um y'all tell me. But uh, I remember when I was in the military, I had this soldier. His name was, uh, I don't, I don't, I won't tell you his name. His name was Private. <laughs> he was, he, he was always needing a ride to somewhere. And I picked him up and would drive him often because he didn't have his own POV or privately owned vehicle. He didn't have his own car. And uh, he would always compliment me. He would be like, no, this is a nice car. He's like, it's a very cool car. And I'm like, it's just like a new, it's like a, a Chevy, uh, not an Impala, it was a Malibu, Chevy Malibu. It was like just a regular ass Chevy Malibu. It wasn't even like the sports version or anything. Little four inline four cylinder, a tectonic shifting, tectronic shifting. I could go into like manual a little bit. That shit didn't, it overrode it. But anyways, uh, <laughs> he would always compliment me. He was like, wow, man. He was like, you got a really nice house here. You got a nice car. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> so like, this is like, I don't know, 2005, 2006, something like that. And yeah, it always weirded me out whenever people were too nice. And I don't know what happened. Like something at some point, I made a switch and I became that person that was maybe it's just being around him or maybe he inspired me a little bit to be more positive and nice to people. But he, this is the same guy that introduced me to World of Warcraft. So this is the guy. <laughs> and since then, like since like 2006 or so, I've been playing World of Warcraft. My very first character that I ever created that I actually like leveled up and he was a mage. He was a... I had a priest at first as he got to like level 52. His name was Arthur. He was a holy priest or a shadow priest on the Alliance side, a human priest. And then on the Horde side, when I started to take him, wow, really seriously, I made mystical. He was a mage. He was a troll mage. And, uh, yeah, um, that was my first character. I got that, that account got banned. It got suspended for, I, I don't know if it was real money transactions or uh, gliding. I had a glider <laughs> and while I was deployed, I would, I would have the glider running and uh, leveling my guys up and, and uh, the, uh, I want to know the name of the zone, Tanaris killing basilisks just on repeat and a uh, loot filter. He would just wand. He would like, and, and, and he'd shadow word death and everything. He had little combos he would throw and then loot filter would just give me some of the best gear, but that accounts it's, it got banned. It's, I was pretty devastated because it was a lot of time gliding. <laughs> I had a lot of time gliding invested in that. Uh, but then it like, uh, I actually, I ended up liking the game quite a bit and, uh, uh, I was looking at accounts that you could buy. I saw you could buy accounts and I was like, oh, there's money in buying accounts. So I started leveling characters up thinking I'm going to sell my account for like $5,000 or something. But I ended up loving the game more. Like I started really getting into it. I've always had kind of a competitive spirit. And like when you got that little damage meter there, that's it. That's all I need. It's like, show me how much damage I'm doing. I'm going to bring that up just a little bit more. And then it just keep just trying to expand that little. But yeah, that that was uh, that was what was so fun for me in World of Warcraft. Here's the third third group here. I don't know if you all saw that. Here it goes. I began cons con uh, consistently taking actions I believed would lead me to that mind, body and soul path. I feed my mind quality curated information yes this is important right now um think about your kids like or 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 just like children in general you don't just show them everything on the internet like you have to have certain levels of access set in place uh for yourself and for people like it you know even in work environments like there are websites that you shouldn't or couldn't can't really go to 
and there's ways to track things on computers like i always assume that someone's going to scrape my computer or something but there's also ways that if you have the resources and and the know-how to create a like off off the internet networks that are secure that are protected with like cryptography and firewalls and stuff like that i hope to one day maybe get a get a back cave set up like that we we might I don't know. We'll see. The facts aren't why you are suffering. Your perception or how you look at the facts are why you suffer. So facts aren't why you're suffering. It's how you look at the facts. That's basically why you suffer. I see now, this is something that I think Tony Robbins said. I was like watching one of his videos and he was like, write this shit down. And I was like, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Start writing it down. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you, you can't like get more bulletproof than that. The facts are why you're suffering. Um, or they are not why you're suffering. He says aren't. There's a little apostrophe there. Okay, so they're not. So the facts, everything is data. So again, you could go back to the last page and look at the information uh, being curated. You want quality information. So for example, uh, it's data. So if, if the data shows that this person that makes jewelry is the top paid, highest earning, you know, most popular jeweler that everybody knows, everybody goes to versus the mom and pop shop down the street where like, maybe they do know what they're doing, but maybe they don't have access to the tools to actually you know, see things that somebody at that higher level would actually know. So in a way, it's like you have to find the experts. And if you find someone better, switch to that person and start listening to that person. And I try my best to one of the like some of the top people I listen to are like the Joe Rogan podcast. He talks to scientists like I know it's MMA and stuff like that, which I love. Like, by the way, I like UFC. I like MMA stuff, combatives like uh close combat all that stuff is very interesting to me um and even like the fighting games is what i think got me started on it tekken specifically showed me there was different fighting styles but yeah i used to get in fights when i was a kid and like i don't know it was it's it's better to be prepared for a scenario like that but i've never had like structured curriculum and in a way it feels like all the smarts throughout my whole life have come from outside of structured curriculum I feel like that's always been like the the heaviest juice that I've gotten out of the squeeze, I guess. But but yeah, everything's just data. It's all facts. So uh, you see something horrifying, you see something offensive, like you have the power to click a couple buttons and never see that again. You also have the power to like report that person so nobody else has to see that again. So uh, I think. A lot of the conversations I hear uh, uh, whenever I'm listening to podcasts and uh, people and TikToks and like, I don't have Instagram or Snapchat. I, don't, I actually don't have a phone. I got I got a Kindle Fire 6 and it's my son's that I just use because he doesn't really use it. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm not always here on the computer, but uh, if I did, I probably know a lot more about other conversations, but the conversations I hear on these platforms is is a, a lot of it's some of the same stuff so in my opinion like whenever we start repeating some of the same topics and we don't have anything else to talk about but these same topics that i feel like is where education comes in like i feel like that's where you start to build some fundamental curriculum to start to get the youth to understand these things but like and it's it's all changed it's the red queen's army it's like by the time any of that stuff gets published you're you're like but the world's faster now, guys. Like, I think we could, like, I don't know. There, it, it, it's, it's, it can keep, it, it get more, it's all facts. It's data. All right, here we go. No problem is permanent. Your soul is uh, pervasive. Okay, so your soul's pervasive and no problem is permanent. So that's that same platitude you hear where they're like, uh, this too shall pass. And it does. Like, and you only realize that with experience as you get older, um, you go through, uh, these, these very long, uh, you know, tours in Iraq, uh, service in the military, uh, high school, you know, education to graduation, like all these things that when you're in them, they, they feel like forever, even basic training was like what nine weeks, the first nine weeks of initial entry just felt like forever. And, uh, 
It is like when you're there it's forever, but afterwards you're like, damn, that was fast. Cause often these things, like you're doing something all the time. So it's, it's like the more you do something all the time, the more it becomes automatically ingrained. And I think of it like walking. It's like a child learns how to walk. So they never have to think about walking again. But some people go from as far as crawling, they go from crawling to as far as uh, tricking and parkour and, and all these aerial acrobatics and Cirque du Soleil type things. Like, so what, what movement evolves into like with enough time and repetition and practice, that's part of what the, the stalwart aspect of the stalwart Vanguard is. It's like in Spanish, uh, elude is eludir, right? So when that, it, and these don't directly translate often these types of words, like when I Google stalwart, it doesn't, they don't really have a word for that. Uh, some, some other word that I found that was close to it uh was uh it was something like uh eludir leal leal l e a l and it was like uh it meant the unconditioned so in spanish i guess elude stalwart means elude the unconditioned like escape the unconditioned so in in our uh unconditioned escape if you if you switch that around often in spanish things are uh what is it the subject before um the the initial words or whatever but anyways <laughs> the point i guess is is like you're uh you're escaping the unconditioning or you're either escaping the unconditioned which means like you're separating yourself from people who haven't conditioned themselves or haven't like put the reps in or uh you can flip it around and say the unconditioned escape which means like you still haven't been conditioned and you're going to escape anyways. So it works in Spanish coincidentally. And I, I kind of like that. And in English, elude stalwart, it initially was born out of an idea for a character I had. I had a character named elude stalwart in uh, Star Wars, the old Republic. It was a, uh, it's an MMORPG on, uh, I think it's, I think it's its own thing. It's on, uh, is it EA Activision? I got the internet right here. What am I? Here, let, let's go. Oh, guys, did y'all see this? I, I'll show that to y'all. Well, I'll show it to you again. Here. Welcome to the Star Wars Vanguard Experience. <laughs> okay. Um, I always check back to see if the camera froze because I don't know if you've been watching the streams. The camera been freezing lately. Um, uh, I forget what I was even looking up. Um, so we'll move on. We'll move, we'll move on from there. Uh, I think we actually got plenty of, so we'll, if y'all want to hear more, if y'all want to hear more about any of this stuff, guys, if y'all want to hear anything else, then, uh, check me out on the elude stalwart or the stalwart Vanguard experience podcast here. And we'll get through more than three or four pages of this notebook. I still got plenty more. So till then, peace.